Do you love discovering digital tools that you never knew existed and that can transform your online experience? If so, you are going to love this episode. A lot of our episodes are about inspiration and even practical tips to grow your business. But in today's episode, I'm covering five digital tools that you probably don't know about and wish you did. Plus, all but one of these have honestly useful free versions, with at least one of them being so robust you'll probably never spend a dime on it. And finally, some of these tools can be used for yourself personally, whether or not you have a business. But since this is a podcast for entrepreneurs, rest assured they're all super useful for helping you grow in your success. This is the Heart Body Business Podcast, inspiration, tips, and tools for entrepreneurs seeking a more fulfilling type of success, one that stems from exploring and expressing their true passion and purpose and finding healthy ways to do so, all coupled with insights and action items to get a business moving in the right direction. I'm Steve, your host, and I invite you to learn more at heartbodybusiness.com. I'm so excited to share this episode because I really do love finding new digital tools because when you find the ones that are really useful, you can hardly picture life without them anymore. Sometimes they do something really substantial, and sometimes they just fix some small thing that's always been a pain to deal with. Either way, tools like these can make a difference, and that's what we're all about here. Now, full disclosure, I do have affiliate relationships with a couple of these tools, not all of them, just because I use them and love them myself. I don't refer anything I don't use or believe in. So if you want to support the show, please follow the links in the description. It doesn't change your pricing, especially if you use the tool for free. And it helps me do more shows like this in the future. So ready to get rocking? Here we go. Tool number one, Wavebox. Do you use a ton of tabs in your browser? Do you use multiple browsers so you can log into different accounts in the same services, like one for work and one for personal? Both of these issues made the web difficult for me until I found Wavebox. I've been infamous for keeping 50 or more tabs open in each browser I used, and I would keep two browsers open, so more than 100 tabs, which really slows your computer down. And I used those two browsers because I needed to be logged into one Google account for work and one for personal. And within both of these, I would try organizing tabs by project, maybe health research tabs here, vacation research tabs here, several different writing projects here, social media tabs here. Absolute nightmare, of course. So I can't tell you what a lifesaver Wavebox has been. This one browser lets me stay logged into multiple instances of any software at the same time, as it allows me to have different cookie containers that act as if I'm using multiple browsers. Within each container, like personal and work, and even one for this podcast, I can break it into several sections, like research on different topics, distribution for the podcast, social media, whatever makes sense to me. Now, each project has its own set of tabs, so whatever I'm engaged in, it's easy for me to navigate. If I'm researching for an upcoming article, I probably just have a few tabs open, one for writing and a few for research. Better yet, Wavebox puts tabs to sleep if I'm not using them, saving RAM and speeding up my computer. You can set up projects with more than just tabs in them, adding in apps, files, and web links. You get unified search across all tabs. You get an AI assistant. And there's even a cool-looking Teams option if you're not a solo operation. Plus, they don't track you the way many other browsers do. 
And if you use Chrome, this is built on Chromium, so you can use all the same extensions you're used to. Now, there absolutely is a free version to this, but I'll be honest, I pay $100 a year for this to remove limits to all these conveniences while also getting rid of browser tracking. Totally worth it to me. That said, I'm not going to kid you. Set this up over a weekend as it might take you a couple days to really get it set up how you like it and get used to it. Once you do, you will thank me. So you're welcome in advance. That's Wavebox. Tool number two, Text Blaze. Add this free extension to your Chrome browser or any Chromium-based browser, including Wavebox, and you can start typing a few letters to insert a much longer text into any browser-based application. Now, this is almost a comically stupid example, but believe it or not, I used to dread setting up a Zoom meeting just because I had to log into Zoom and go to my personal meeting room and grab the URL to send someone. Granted, I could also bookmark it and then hover over the bookmark and copy and paste the URL, but then I'm taking a precious slot on my bookmarks bar. With text blaze, I can just type forward slash Zoom five letters that take me one second to type. It instantly replaces these with my Zoom link. Done, just like that. So if there's anything you type repeatedly, TextBlaze is your solution. It could be a signature you put into forums, instructions you send to all your clients, and more. Each of these codes, like forward slash Zoom, is called a snippet. And as of this recording, a free account gives you up to 20 with up to 2,500 characters in each one. Never pay a dime and save a load of time. There you go, a free slug line they might want to use. Now, if that doesn't already seem like a superpower for you, they have paid upgrades for a few dollars a month. With an upgrade, your snippet can include forms that you have to fill out before it propagates. So if you're regularly sending the same email to people, but you need to add their name and a quote amount and maybe a description of services, but everything else is the same. Then you type your quick snippet and you're asked to enter the name, quote amount, and service description. It automatically inserts those into the overall email and you're done. This could be a great way for a receptionist to fill out information about a phone call so you're sure to receive all the details you're wanting from each call. And by the way, it can fill multiple fields, like a to field in an email, along with a subject line, along with the body of the email. It automatically jumps from field to field and fills them in. So again, making that receptionist's job really easy with an email sent to you with every message taken. Just one example of a million, of course. In short, speed and consistency with the ability to customize. It can even do auto calculations, insert today's date, add images, and share across teams depending on the upgrade you've got. They're all inexpensive. So if you or your team do anything repetitive like this, TextBlaze makes it easy. Tool number three, mail track. I have to mention this because I've used it for years. The paid version is just 60 bucks a year, and at times it is invaluable. It does just what it says. It tracks the emails you send and lets you know when someone opens them and whether they've clicked on links inside. And yes, there are other mail tracking tools, but this one is inexpensive and it just works. With a simple double check mark symbol right in your email client, you can see at a glance all the emails you're tracking, because you don't have to track all of them, and which ones have been opened. You never need to log into MailTrack to see this. You can even get pop up notifications on your computer when someone opens an email. If this seems like just something for business, think about times when you might want to make sure someone's received and actually opened an email. 
Maybe you've sent a party invitation or sent some important news. Meanwhile, if someone tells you they didn't receive something from you, you'll know whether it's true or not. You can even get follow-up alerts if someone doesn't open an email or doesn't reply so you know to reach out again. To me, it's pretty much an invisible service right up to the point when I need it, and then it's so easy to use. And by the way, it even shows if you've received an email that's being tracked by the sender. Now, they do have a free version, but when you send tracked emails with the free version, it shows the mail track branding. So honestly, this is one service I would always upgrade. Like I said, I've used this service for years and highly recommend it, but it only works for Gmail and Outlook. So if you're using another email provider, you're out of luck here, but there may be similar services you can find. Tool number four, talk to. Did you ever want to put a chat feature on your website so you can interact in real time with your visitors? If so, this tool is robust and it's free. It lets you know who's on your website right now, You can wait for them to start a chat, or you can reach out to ask if they have any questions through the chat feature. You can even automate reaching out after someone's been on a page for a certain amount of time, set up automated snippets for quick replies, and much more. Set it to business hours only, get information about your visitors, use emojis, and did I mention that it's free? In fact, They also offer a free CRM and a customer knowledge base. Now, I'm not sure I would use the CRM because I'd want one that captures email addresses and puts people into autoresponder emails and so on. But the knowledge base looks good, although I've never used that. So what's the catch? Is the free version limited? Is it worse than other chat software? No, the free version isn't limited, and you'd probably find it's as good as any chat software out there. It's just that they do offer paid options without limiting the software. For instance, if you want, you can put AI to work in your chat or even hire inexpensive live agents without having to hire employees. Literally have your chats answered 24-7 at ridiculously low rates. But if you don't need that sort of thing, the chat software itself is a complete and free solution. That's talk to. Tool number five, link digital business cards. Why just use a paper business card when you could use one that's as robust as a website and that lets people instantly save your contact info on their phone? There are several digital business card options out there, but Link is possibly the most robust. I researched quite a few before getting this for myself. So how does it work? You basically get several ways to trigger someone's phone into opening a mini website featuring you and whatever you want to share about yourself. Basically, a digital profile. So for instance, I carry around a plastic business card that has near field communication built in. If I hold it next to someone's phone, it almost instantly pops open my profile. If a phone doesn't have NFC, then it can scan the QR code on the back and open the same profile. If I still want to hand out paper business cards, I can have that same QR code on the paper card, so they're still able to open my digital profile while keeping a physical card. They also have other tools to trigger this effect on the phone, but you get the idea. Suddenly, instead of offering just contact information on a business card, you can offer pretty much anything you could share on a website. So, add text, including expandable text, which is great for FAQs. Add images, links, social icons, reviews, and more. Even get basic analytics about your visits. And all of that is free, although you might want to buy one of those plastic business cards I mentioned. In short, totally worth checking out. However, once again, 
upgrading is inexpensive and there's a ton of value to it. As of this recording, it's $5 a month. What can you do for that $5? Embed videos or audio, include files people can view or download, directly link to Calendly or Acuity Scheduling to accept appointments, connect to Stripe and receive payments, add forms so people can send you their information, get advanced analytics, Plus, you get multiple profiles, so you can have one for your nine to five, one for your side hustle, one for dating, whatever you like. Then you can either have multiple business cards to open profiles on people's phones, one card for each profile, or if you want just one card, you can use your app to switch which one the card will open. Personally, I use different cards, each with a different color, so I never have to wonder whether it's linked to the right profile. But it is possible to use one card and drive people to whatever profile you want through the app. One last thing, when your profile pops up on someone's phone with Link, the person is also given the option to click a button and instantly add your contact information into their phone. So whether or not they have time to browse your profile, they can still grab your contact info easily and accurately. So there you have it, five digital tools you probably didn't know about, and now you know why I thought you would like to know about them. All of them have free options, and even the upgrades are less than $10 a month each. Dirt cheap for things that I find make my life better, and hopefully you'll find one or two of these that do the same for you. If you liked this episode, make sure to subscribe as I'd like to bring more tools your way for personal development, health, and business. The best of what I find. I'll still be doing inspiration and practical tips in my episodes as well, but I want to bring you a great blend of things that will enhance all areas of your life, from your inner world to your health and vitality and right into the world of business and success. Till next time, thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe. You can also join our mailing list to get alerts on our latest episodes and other tips, tools, and news. Learn more and sign up at heartbodybusiness.com.